Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stacking Triggers, a podcast about Magic the Gathering. I'm Caleb, and I'm considering spending $100 on a playset of Sliver Hives. I'm Bill, and I've made it one more year around the sun. Uh, I'm Dan, and uh, by the time this episode ends, I'm probably going to buy another box of Strixhaven. The the joke being that I, I have four boxes of Strixhaven, uh, one that I've already opened what and three still fuck? coming. I just, I don't get it. I, that's, that's a lot of boxes. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a lot of boxes. Uh, don't worry, I'll do like a giveaway like Caleb's doing with, with his Zendikar yeah. Rising sets. Well, if anybody ever talks to me about it. Yeah, that's true. You're gonna be like, you're gonna be fucking buried in draft chaff, bud. It's whatever. Uh, as long as I pull another dark ritual, it'll, 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 a hollow dark ritual, it'll be fine. So tasty. What's that dark ritual going for? Uh, I th- the foil version, I think, was 50? Hmm. What was that? What was, oh, yeah. What was the first card I pulled? It was, um, no, fuck. Like, literally, the, the first Mystical Archive card I pulled. What was it? Oh, Demonic Tutor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a $50 card in my uh, $25 pre-release kit, so... Nice work. Still still waiting on my pre-release right. to get to my house. You should have oh. just called your local game store. I don't know, the pre-release was, what, like, today? Yesterday? Uh, they probably only sent it out today. Let me see if they've even shipped it yet. I got my cards, um, my pre-release box yesterday, because they were just doing it all weekend. They were just like, okay, hey, hey, here's, we, we got the stuff in store, we're gonna send out emails, because, like, I'm on their Discord, and they're like, hey, we're gonna, we got stuff in store, we're sending out emails whenever your stuff's ready. Uh, I got done with work, drove to my local game shop, browsed around, got a, a nice play mat of, uh, a Pokeball. And then I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. huh, I also need, like, a deck box thing. So I got a deck box thing. And then I walked up to the counter, and I'm like, hey, I'm here to pick up my pre-release kit. And just uh, also give me a, a box of a Strixhaven. And they're like, sure. And I'm like, cool. And so I went home and opened it all. I have not yet seen you open the, the big box yet. I'm excited to watch that. How dare you? How <laughs> dare me? Yeah, that's on our, our Stacking Triggers YouTube page, where everyone can go watch pack openings and other such nonsense. I don't know. I, I got pretty excited when you got uh the Prismari guy. Oh, Galazeth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. F- uh, Bill, extended art... Uh, no, no, not extended art. Uh, alternate art, Galazeth Prismari. Hmm. That's your, that's your guy, by the way. I, I know. I know. I know, I'm Prismari, man. Let's see, I also got, uh, <laughs> I'll just spoil the, the dragons that I got. I got the Lorehold dragon, and I got the uh, Silver Quill dragon. So I'm just waiting on the Witherbloom dragon, and uh, what, the fuck's it, what the fuck is it? Why can't I remember the, the, the fourth one, or the fifth one? Quandrix, that's it. I don't, have, I don't have the Quandrix dragon. So, my pre-release kit is waiting for USPS to get it. The shipping label is created, mm-hmm. and it is just, it's sitting in Mawa, Mawa, New Jersey. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those are words. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so sad. I should have just gone the extra 40 minutes to, yeah. to Buffalo. Yeah. You could have called it. Well, here's the thing. You could have called ahead and been like, hey, do you have pre-release kits? And then they could have told you yes or no, and then you could have pre-ordered it. Or you could have just pre-ordered it online. Like, I pre-ordered it, uh, th- like, from the Wizards website to my local game store, which is only about 20 minutes away. It's a cool place. I can't wait till it's open, because then I can play Magic in front of uh, a sweaty nerd. And he'll tell you everything you're doing wrong. Uh, don't project on me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, how are you getting your pre-release kit? Uh, I ordered through TCG Player. Um, it'll come to my house sometime. I haven't checked on it because uh, 
I don't really care that much. I'll get it when I get it. <sighs> Some people. Some people. Sorry uh, that I'm excited <laughs> about the game. Yeah, get excited. Come on, Caleb. More Paper Magic. You and I played Paper Magic last night over webcam. It was fun. You it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel, just feel like you guys are a lot more high on Strixhaven than I am right now. That's fair. Yeah. I'm still, just, uh, I don't know. Like, well, I'll, I'll play it. I'm not, uh, I'm not against the set or anything. I just, just don't know if I uh, care about it as much as Caldheim. And, that's and I definitely didn't care about Caldheim as much as I cared about Zendikar. So, uh, we'll see how she goes. Yeah, nah, I mean so, that's, so what, that's all fair. Go ahead, Bill. So, oh, I was going to ask why. Why did you care about Zendikar? Was it more story based, or was it just um, the cards excited you more? It's part of that. Uh, Zendikar was like the first set I played was Battle for Zendikar, so that was my first plane. And uh, I don't know. It just it's special to me. I'm hyped for this set because it's Harry Potter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm hyped on I don't the know, meme. I'm, I'm really hype for uh, the D and D set, but mostly I'm hype for uh, the new Innistrad sets that are coming out mm. towards the end of the year. Sure, um, which I like Innistrad a lot. I'm I'm also just really hyped for it because of rotation, and I don't want to ever see the ultimatums. <laughs> or adventures ever again. I like the adventures. I th I think those are. I like the adventures, but I don't know. Fucking teamer adventures is fucking bonkers. That one is uh, I... green, red, and black. Uh, green, blue, and red. Mm. I'm still I'm learning my colors. See. For instance, I th I thought the deck we're going to be talking about later was Teamer, and then I was like, "Oh no, it's Bant. Never mind. I'm yeah. an idiot." Yeah, it's okay. You uh, you didn't play Cons of Tarkir. I'll forgive you, William. You were trying to say, yes, I, I was. I was just saying how much I also hate the ultimatums because in Arena, I was seeing a lot of them right before the Strixhaven release, and now that Strixhaven release, and everybody's playing. Who hasn't played in a long, long time? It's less less of that stuff. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yes, I yes. I don't know. I'm, I was trying to add to the conversation that happened like ten minutes ago. It's fine. Uh, I mean, I'm <laughs> mostly looking forward to uh, Virgin Rogue disappearing forever, despite the fact that I'm a dirty, dirty rogue player. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I um. I tried to play my popper deck against your fucking rogue challenger deck last night. Mm -hmm. And uh I did I did fairly well until I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> until it out resourced you because that's exactly what it does. And not only is that a challenger deck, but also it's souped up. Like that was the, the deck I was I bought like a hundred something dollars worth of cards for. So uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I did get my challenger decks after complaining last week. Uh, I, I went out to Walmart and bought, uh, the red challenger deck and the Azurius challenger deck. And then, uh, the next day I got all four of my decks from one package. So that's why when they all said they, they hadn't been shipped, I guess somebody finally realized, wait, why did we create four labels when we could have just created one and shoved them all into one package? Uh, so they <laughs> did that. And then I got them all, and then I gave them the bill. And by gave them, I mean give me my fucking money. Yes. Here, here's your money. <laughs> I'm waiting for the notification on my phone. I, I don't know. I, I asked you how you wanted it, and you never. Oh, you never uh, told me the, the normal way people want <laughs> money. <laughs> I don't know. There's like three ways people ask for money. <laughs> fucking PayPal to me, you moron. Look, there's PayPal. There's Venmo. There's Cash App. Like people, yeah, people buy me go nuts. Bitcoin. I don't care. <laughs> buy him a fucking prepaid visa. Yeah, mail me oh, cash. Man. Who cares? I'll get you a net zero card and mail it to you. <laughs> start just start me a fifty dollar CD. I don't I don't give a shit. Just pay me money. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm now officially got stuff to talk about. 
Yes. Bill, you're just you're just happy I'm, to I'm be terrible. here, aren't you? I I am. I am so happy to be a part of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you along. Um, I don't know. I have kind of a topic I can get into. Okay, if, if you guys uh, feel like it, sure. Um, it's a lore topic. Uh huh. Um. So since we have a new set, uh, that. Kind of redefined some classic color pairings. Uh, I wanted to know if you guys wanted to take a brief sojourn to the Plain of Ravnica, where I will teach you about uh, the Ten Guilds. Uh, the what now? Sure. Okay. Um, Ravnica, as in the magic set Ravnica, and uh, Return to Ravnica, and... Return to Return to Ravnica. Um, basically, the whole planet is one giant city that sprawls over the entire surface of the planet. Uh, and the power in Ravnica is held in by uh, ten different guilds. Like they're they're each different political factions that have uh, each has two of the five colors associated with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they each have different philosophies about how they should conduct themselves and how society should be structured. Uh, so first is the Boros Legion. Uh, this is basically the the military, like the the police. Um, they act as the enforcers of order on Ravnica. Uh, and they are not against using force to keep the peace. The Boros, Boros Legion is epitomized by the actions of the Wojek League, the police force of Ravnica. They are inspired by uh, the Archangel Razia. Um, yeah, and the mechanic that is tied to them from the original Ravnica set is Radiance, uh, which affects every permanent that shares a color with uh, a target permanent, mm -hmm. and when played on multicolor card, it spreads the effect through all that card's colors. Um, so, like, basically, you can buff your whole army all at once. Uh, and then in Return to Ravnica, they had a uh, battalion as their mechanic. Uh, so that represents their ideal of working in tandem with each other. Uh, so whenever a creature with battalion attacks with at least two other creatures, uh, some effect triggers whatever the battalion effect is. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's Boros. They are the red-white. Uh, then Dan's favorite is House Dimir, uh, the, uh, the blue-black guild. It's a fine house. It's just they, yeah. they got some virgin-ass robes. <laughs> <laughs> Dimir is... Um, a shadowy guild that few people, few of the common people of Ravnica are sure still exists. The other nine guilds, guilds know that it does, and they traffic in secrets, employing a network of spies and assassins to discover them and enforce their use in blackmail. Uh, it is led by the eldritch psionic vampire Zadek uh, and the mysterious champer, champion of the guild, Sirsu Demir Lobotomist. So... Uh, fucking edgelords. Uh, their mechanic is transmute. Uh, you can pay three mana of certain colors and discard a card with transmute, uh, which will allow you to find a card of the same converted mana cost from your library. Reveal it, put it into your hand, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And you can do that at sorcery speed. Uh, then in Return to Ravnica they had... Uh, Cypher, which Cypher, I think, is one of the coolest mechanics, like, ever. Uh, it's real good. Uh, so si this symbolizes the house's focus on utilizing covert agents. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you cast a spell with Cypher, you can exile it upon resolution and encode the spell effect onto a creature you control on the battlefield. Then whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. Yo, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you... 
I think there's one. It's like um, it makes you like wheel your hand, like you you discard your hand and draw a new hand. Uh, what? Uh, so then, like you cast the spell, and then as it resolves, you encode it onto a creature you control. And then every time that creature deals combat damage to a player, you cast it again. It's really fun in Commander. Huh. That's interesting. That sounds really, really, really fun. Because I often find myself without a good hand. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like Commander, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If you, uh, if you like hand cycling as a mechanic, I think... Uh, you should look into the commander, commander uh, Yidris Maelstrom wielder, because I built that deck before, and it's uh, pretty much all just like chaos, throwing your hand away, cycling shit. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next up is the Golgari Swarm, which is black green. Uh, they are a sect which emphasizes that death is an essential aspect of the life cycle. Uh, and to that end, they encourage death and plague in order to foster regrowth. They are ruled by a trio of sibling gorgons called the Sisters of Stone Death. Uh, their mechanic is dredge, uh, which, Dan, you got to experience last night. Sure did. So cards with dredge can be returned from your graveyard to your hand uh, if you skip your draw step and instead mill a certain number of cards. So, for example, if a card says Dredge 3, uh, you skip your draw, you put three cards from the top of your deck into your graveyard, and you take that card out of your graveyard and put it into your hand. Um, and then in Return to Ravnica, they got Scavenge. Uh, so this emphasizes the guild's utilization of dead things. Um, so when a creature with Scavenge is in the graveyard, its owner may pay its Scavenge cost. Uh, and upon exiling, exiling that creature from the graveyard, uh, you put 1-1 one, one counters equal to the power of the scavenged creature on a target creature you control. Hmm. Uh, next up is the Selesnia Conclave. Uh, they're a quasi-monastic order, uh, whose members are zealously dedicated to keeping life in balance. The Conclave disapproves strongly of individuality, holding that good is the good of the whole is always more important than that of a single being. Uh, it is directed by the Chorus of the Conclave, a group of mostly ancient dryads, uh, and their guild hall is a giant tree. Uh, their mechanic is, as I look at the list here, where is it? Oh God, <laughs> don't do this to me. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> anything but this oh uh their mechanic is convoke uh so a player playing a spell with convoke may tap uh some of your creatures to pay part or all of a card's mana cost uh so each creature tapped reduces the cost by one mana or uh one mana of that creature's color so like if a convoke spell has white in the co in the casting cost you can tap a white creature to pay for that white mana. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then in Return to Ravnica, their mechanic was Populate, uh, which is their like symbolic of their one for all guild style. Uh, so whenever a spell or ability of a player tells it to uh, tells a player to populate, that player puts a creature token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature token they control. The Is It League, objectively the best one. Is it a league? Uh, they are the mad. <laughs> yeah, the Is It League. Oh, but I'm saying, is it a league? It is. Uh, they are the mad scientists of Ravnica. Uh, they are concerned with pure scientific progress uh, at any cost. Uh, so they are responsible for almost all of the beneficial technologies and magics that keep Ravnica running. Uh, however, they are impulsive and reckless, uh, which means they have just as many failed experience with explosive results. Their guild leader is an extremely intelligent and temperamental egotistic dragon wizard named Niv-Mizzet the Firemind, um, which, as of War of the Spark and like that whole storyline, 
Uh, he died and then was resurrected as the new Living Guild Pact. So I, I assume the Izzet League has a new Guildmaster now, but I have no idea. I don't know if they've said anything officially. So, okay. Uh, their mechanic is hell. Uh, replicate. Spells with replicate allow a given cost to be paid any number of times, and the spell is copied that many times. Each copy can have a different target. Mm. And then Return to Ravnica, their mechanic was... They're becoming harder to find. Uh, overload. Uh, uh, just like the uncontrolled experiments of the Izzet, if its controller pays the more expensive overload cost of a card instead of the normal cost... Uh, that spell has its text changed by replacing in all instances of the word target with the word each. Uh, so probably the most famous example of this is Cyclonic Rift, uh, which is one in a blue to return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, and if you overload it for six in a blue, uh, you return each creature that uh, you don't control to its owner's hand. Hmm. Okay. Wait. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Hoi, 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 hoi. Um, the Gruul clans. Uh, they were originally the Guild of Savage Nature, appointed to speak for and protect the people who lived in the harsh, natural environments of Ravnica. As the city expanded over nature, the other nine guilds, specifically the other green-oriented guilds, uh, began appointing themselves as nature's defenders. Eventually phased out entirely by the rest of the guilds, the Gruul... Uh, fractured into a myriad of different clans, all bent on destroying civilization. Some do it for revenge, others simply because they like to smash stuff. The biggest clan is ruled by the Cyclops Borborygmos. Uh, they are the Red-Green Guild. Uh, Hulk smash. Oh man, they, yeah, they could have Green Hulk and Red fun. Hulk. Um... So their mechanic is Bloodthirst. When creatures with Bloodthirst are played, they gain a boost to their power and toughness if an opponent was already dealt damage that turn. Uh, for example, a 2-3 creature with Bloodthirst 3 could come into play as a 5-6. Uh, and in Return to Ravnica, their guild was Blood Rush. Used to represent the can's eagerness to charge into conflict, cards with Blood Rush can be discarded for their Blood Rush cost in order to bolster an attacking creature with a beneficial effect. Uh, though you do have to discard the card Blood Rushed. So, kind of similar to, I guess, uh, Rimrock Knight's effect, like the adventure half of it. Mm. Um, we're getting there. Uh, the Orzov Syndicate is the White Black Guild. Yep. While masquerading as a religion, the Orz the Orzov is actually uh, a mafia like uh, group of business people, with no economic transaction that isn't directly or indirectly under their control. Uh, they are directed by the Ghost Council of Orzova, uh, composed of the spirits of former Orzov patriarchs and matriarchs. Uh, I I love the idea of like a church mob. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Orzov's pretty sure that a really cool guild already I, with uh, Scientology. <laughs> um, also arguably like the Catholics. I I don't know I, with the description. I feel you gave, like at least in movies there's a big like connection between the mafia and the Catholic Church, but uh, their mechanic is haunt. Uh, when a creature or spell with haunt is put into a graveyard, it is removed from the game, uh, haunting a creature in play. When the haunted creature is put into a graveyard, the creature or spell with haunt can perform an effect again. With the description uh, of that of that guild, it just, I don't know, the image of just, like, ghostly businessmen popped into my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then or Return Martin, to Ravnica, Martin. their mechanic was extort. Uh, so this reflects the guild's emphasis on payment and debts. Uh, so if a creature with extort is on the battlefield upon casting a spell, if you pay the extort cost, which is either one white or a black mana, uh, each of your opponents will lose one life and you gain the total amount of life lost by all opponents. Uh, so this scales for commander if you extort um, like you would 
deal one damage to each member, like each other player, mm-hmm. uh, and then you would gain three if you're in a four player game. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, also interestingly, like with the way Keller identity works in Commander, like you're you can only use cards that have mana symbols that also appear on your Commander. Um, but like extort because you can pay it with either a white or a black. Um, extort doesn't count because the mana symbol is in the reminder text because it's just reminding you how extort works. Uh, and it's not like considered a mana symbol on the card. Uh, so you can run extort in a mono white or a mono black deck. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the Azorius Senate, uh, which is the white blue guild, uh, they are the lawmakers of Ravnica, founded by Azor, hence named the Azorius Senate. The Senate is obsessed with keeping the status quo no matter the cost. Uh, their current leader, Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth, believes that the best way to serve the city is to make any sort of action illegal. Uh, for his hierarchical and bureaucratic guild, history, stability, and the rule of law are paramount. The Grand Arbor conduct, consults a sphinx known as Esperia the Inscrutable, uh, who is the champion of the Azorius. That is hilarious, because uh, Azorius <laughs> control. Yeah, uh, so their mechanic is forecast. Rather than uh, play a card from his or her hand, a player may use its forecast ability during his or her upkeep. Uh, and only once per turn. To use Forecast, the player pays a cost and reveals the card with Forecast in their hand. Uh, Forecast effects are often either a lesser version of the main spell or a support effect for the main spell. Uh, I don't think that I've ever actually played with a Forecast spell, so I can't really tell you much more about it than that. Uh, And then Return to Ravnica, their mechanic was Detain, showing the will of the Azorius to uphold law above all else. Uh, Detain occurs as an effect of a spell or ability most commonly appearing on uh, triggered abilities that trigger when the creature they're printed on enters the battlefield. When a permanent is detained, it's basically locked down for a turn, being unable to attack or block if it's a creature, uh, or to have its abilities activated. The effect lasts until the player who caused it begins his or her next turn. Okay. Uh, The Simic Combine... Uh, my other personal favorite. They are the green-blue. Uh, the Simic's original role was to protect and serve what was left of Ravnica's natural ecosystems. Despite their best efforts, they failed, and there is no place in Ravnica that is left to nature. Now the Simic Combine spends their resources creating new and often frightening species of creatures that not only survive in the stone jungles of Ravnica, but thrive. The oh! guild is headed by the distant and cool elvish biomancer Momir Vig, Simic Visionary. So they're uh, responsible and... for suburban Sasquatch. Yes, it's true. Um, <laughs> so Momir Vig was the original uh, Simic leader. Or at least at the time of uh, the first Ravnica set. Uh, and then uh, Prime Speaker Zagana became the guild master. And uh, I had a commander deck build around her for a long time. I like her a lot. Uh, and then uh, I think they have they have a new um, they have a new guild master uh, named Vanifar. So uh, their mechanic is graft. Uh, So cards with the graft ability come into play with 1-1 counters in accordance to the number of... uh, with the number associated with their graft ability. Uh, So when a creature comes into play, a card with graft may move one of its 1-1 counters onto that creature. Uh, So basically, like, if you have, like, a 1-1 creature with graft 1... Uh, it comes out as a 2-2, but then when you have another creature come into play, uh, the graft creature can move its counter onto that creature uh, and become a 1-1 again. Uh, and then their next mechanic in Return to Ravnica was Evolve. Uh, embodying the guild's focus on improving nature, if a creature with Evolve on the battlefield uh, is on the battlefield when another creature with higher power or toughness comes into play or under its owner's control. The creature with Evolve gets a 1-1 counter. 
So you kind of curve into bigger and bigger creatures and keep pumping up your evolve guys. Right. Um, and last but not least is the Cult of Rakdos. Uh, named after its demon leader, Rakdos the Defiler, the Cult of Rakdos is completely self-absorbed, out, out only for a good time. Uh, however, their idea of a good time usually involves murder and mayhem. The more bloody and depraved, the better. The cult would love to rule Ravnica and turn it into one big slaughter fest, but to them it's the process of random death and destruction that is fulfilling, not the goal. Fortunately for the Rakdos, their interest in the dark art of death has made them a top-notch uh, group of mercenaries and assassins, uh, which the other guilds are more than happy to take advantage of. Uh, they also have, like, a theatrical element, so they have, like, big uh, stage productions where, you know, like, several members of the cast and probably the first few rows of the audience are probably going to die. Oh, cool! Because uh, <laughs> there's just, like, flying knives and, like, blood showers and, like, fucking, I don't know. Rakdos is a, a neat guild. Because there ain't no party like a murder sex party. Uh, their mechanic <laughs> is Hellbent. Cards with the Hellbent ability gain additional attributes uh, when their controllers have no cards in their hand. Um, and then in return to Ravnica, they had uh, Unleash. Uh, embodying their ideal of putting on a good show if a card has Unleash... Its controller has the option of having it enter the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. Creatures with Unleash are unable to block if they have a 1-1 counter on them. Hmm. Uh, and that's it. That's, uh... Well, I mean, the first two. The first two instances of Ravnica, anyway. I forget what the new mechanics are. I wasn't really playing the game whenever, uh... Like, Guilds of Ravnica came out. How dare you? I think I I think I bought like one or two packs of Guilds of Ravnica. Hmm. Well, okay then. What? Not not three boxes? Yeah. How how could you not go full Dan and buy a million boxes? I mean, I bought three boxes of fucking Zendikar Rising. That's not enough. Buy three boxes of every set. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. I fucking hate this set. Well, I'm going to buy three boxes of it anyway. Who cares? <laughs> That's my whole story. I right. hope now you guys know more about uh, some lore that you maybe are interested in. I, I just like the cards. We like the card. Yeah, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess that'll bring us to, uh, our deck of the week, and, uh, it's my deck, and my turn. Uh, so, uh, Bill, as I told you earlier, basically what you do is you net deck, and then, uh, figure out, uh, ways to make it yours. So, uh, I saw, I was, like, leafing through, like, Quandrix, and I saw that they have, like, several cards that allow them to play, uh, you know, land directly from your deck. So I'm like, ah, cool! Let's do something with Landfall with them. So obviously green and Landfall. Uh, and I also wanted to keep stuff like Felidar Retreat uh, in in the deck. So I went with a Bant Landfall deck. Fun. Uh, I like it for the most part. But Caleb, you did bring up the fact that uh, it lacks significant card draw. And uh, that is its big problem. Is that sometimes you just get dead hands and then it's just... Oh, yikers. Yeah, that was the biggest problem I was having with my Landfall deck um, for a good long while. And, like, also back in Battle for Zendikar when I was trying to play a Landfall deck, I was like, oh, I just can't draw cards. So if I don't get, like, perfect top decks, I just die. Right. Um, thankfully, for the most part, uh, Toski has fixed that. Yeah, oh, Toski. I I love Toski. I, I thought about Toski honestly, but like I, 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 I guess I just don't. I don't. I don't see it. Like 
I feel like whenever Toski actually starts doing its thing, I'm either going to be winning or losing by that point. But that's just me. So, what's Emiria's call for? Is that just to block any flyers they get? N- no. It gives you angels and indestructible. Or it's a, a land. Or it's a land. Okay, I mean, I don't know. I was just asking. Read, uh, Bill. I read, I read the card. I read the card. <laughs> I read the flip. Well, well now you understand it the just, card. I just reading the just, card just, explains the card. It's like we say it every week. Uh, I, I wonder why. Yeah, that's basically that's basically <laughs> it. Like, yeah, it it could be cut, sure, but then at that point, I'm only running two two uh, things with white in them, so it's almost like I should cut like white entirely. But I hate all of the blue landfall stuff, and Felidar Retreat is super good. It is really good. Mm. I've that game that card has won me a lot of games. That card can spiral games out of control entirely. Uh especially when like you're you're comboing with um you know like Zamon Qua- Quandrix Prodigy to uh to play like two lands or three lands a turn if you have uh Fabled Passage. Uh also you have Marasa Root Grazer, which uh, it has Vigilance to 2-3 for uh, a green and a white. You can tap it, put a basic land from your hand onto the battlefield, or if you just want to combo like crazy, uh, you can tap it to return a basic land you control to your hand. Right, so it, it keeps you from getting, like, m- mana screwed, basically. Like, it's... it's. I love Marasa Root Grazer, honestly, like, mostly on turn three uh so like if you miss your third land drop and you have a marasa root grazer out uh you can tap a land for mana tap the root grazer to return that land to your hand play that land and then tap it for mana yeah uh which is so so deliciously fun to do I my favorite turn three play is uh drop lotus cobra drop a land and then play Feldar retreat yeah. Yeah, if you can get the turn three Felidar retreat, that's like the game is going strongly in your favor. Yeah. Or at least it should be. Uh if basically if you lose with that kind of a setup, you're you 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 got fucked. Yeah, it it wasn't gonna happen for you. Yeah. But uh like we were talking card draw, like Eureka Moment, I'm running four of those. I think that's a really good card. Uh because it lets you draw two, and then you can put a land from your hand onto the battlefield, so that helps you with your landfall. Yeah, it's definitely good. I I feel like it's a bit overcasted, or overcasted, overcosted. <laughs> um, but like, it probably isn't because fucking everything in Simic colors can just like draw infinite cards and play infinite lands well so like it's probably costed appropriately and i just wish that it was cheaper because i'm a scumbag (laughs) well in in terms of cost (laughs) like behold the multiverse like yeah that lets you scry too but like that's Mm -hmm. that's it's put a land from your hand onto the battlefield also um it it just it just says put a land from your hand onto the battlefield Mm mm-hmm like that's the full clause you may on put, it. You may you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Okay. Okay. So like most spells that just let you put a land onto the battlefield make it come in tapped. So like it technically kind of costs one less in a way because like you get access to more mana after you cast it. Because mm-hmm. the land comes in untapped. Yeah. So so that's pretty good. If you have the land, of course. Mm-hmm. But even still, like, uh, I, I think that card, I, I think having this card at four is pretty spectacular. Uh, I'm also running three copies of Quandrix Cultivator, which uh, whenever it hits the battlefield, I may search my library for a basic forest or basic island, put it onto the battlefield, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. So 
Uh, similar to Eureka Moment, it's like it costs one less. Nice. Yeah, I like how, like, Quandrix isn't so much um, about comboing off. Like, it's about generating value and, like, stomping over people with big creatures. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm running uh, three copies of Double Major, which uh, I... I with with Caleb's help, uh, figured out what the fuck it meant. Uh, copy target creature spell <laughs> you control. So uh, it has, as Caleb pointed out, it has to be on the stack for you to copy it. Yeah, creature spell, not creature. Yeah, uh, believe me, I tr- I was like, why can't I copy my fucking cute swarm? <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple uh, Prismari cards like that too, where if it has to be on the stack for you to copy yeah. it. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, if you're copying an instant or sorcery, it, it it would have to be on the stack. Well, like that is one of the big mechanics in the set is copying spells. So, so, uh, any thoughts on this? On on like, I know Caleb brought up Toski. M- maybe opt. Eh, maybe I don't know. Like, it's fun to have opt as a turn one play, but like, it never feels as impactful as I would like it to be. I don't know. I think think it's pretty good. I like the uh, Kazandu Mammoths in there. Yeah. Well, you brought up the point of, like, potentially dropping lands, like, addition, like, maybe even forests to put more cards in. Yeah, because you have 30 lands if you include your modal dual face cards. Um, I just don't think you'll need that many. I would drop probably four lands, like drop your lands to 20, but keep the the modals in there uh, and then put more spells in it. OK. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing there's like nothing to like counter or no removal. Right. I don't think I saw any removal. Um, so when you're playing Selesnia landfall, are you running removal? Uh Oh, yeah, I'm I'm running. uh I think I'm down to one copy of Glass Casket, uh, but I was running Glass Caskets, um, Banishing Lights, and uh, I forget what else I had in there. I think I had some kind of fight card in it. Uh, Ram Through? No. Let me look it up. I I do have um, a fucking Doom Scar in that deck, oh. uh, which also, <laughs> like... Because I'm running heroic intervention, so like I can make all my creatures indestructible and then doom scar, which feels really good. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, giant killer is the other one. Giant killer. Uh, and skyclave apparition. Skyclave apparition is a good card. Actually, skyclave apparition is really good. That would that would probably do what you need it to do. Um, because it hits all permanents. <laughs> Skyclave exile uh, except you know, except for lands and tokens, and um, uh, it exiles sh- them, so uh, uh, they don't get to have them back. Yeah, interesting. And they get when they get a yeah, illusion token instead, which is it's an illusion. Who cares? Yeah, which is you know it's who who gives a shit. Yeah, but uh, not your yeah. big man. I don't know. Boy. I like uh, I like where you're at with this. I, so. I yeah I, I I like the general skeleton. I just feel like it needs something, you know. Yeah, you'll get there. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess the only thing left is to talk about Caleb's card of the week. Uh, so since I went through all the guilds, I'm going to talk about Momir Vig Simic Visionary. Uh. So Momir Vig, Simic Visionary, is three, a green, and a blue for a legendary creature elf wizard. Whenever you cast a green creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and then put it on the top of your... Or uh, shuffle and then put it on top of your library. Okay. Uh, Whenever you cast a blue creature spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put that card into your hand. Uh, And he's a 2-2. So, when you cast a green creature, you tutor something to the top of your library. When you uh, cast a blue creature, you get to draw it. 
Uh, if you cast a creature that is both green and blue, you can stack the triggers so that... <laughs> he said the thing! Uh, hey! <laughs> when you hear the word of the day, scream real loud. Uh, but you can stack the triggers so that uh, you tutor something directly into your hand. Uh, obviously, this is a creature's deck that you want to go wide and just uh, keep casting a, a whole bunch of creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, since uh, I I built this deck, I never really got it tuned to to where I wanted it. I might double back on it at some point, but uh, since you're in Simic, you know, you want to play with your evolves and your grafts and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, why not run Simic Ascendancy? So whenever you put a 1-1 counter on something, uh, you put a counter on Simic Ascendancy, and if you get 20 counters on Simic Ascendancy, you win the game. Okay. Uh, so, also, nice. uh, you're in blue, so proliferate. Oh, yeah. What the hell was that? I just got, I think I just got a Mystical Archive. Or Mystic Archive card that proliferates. Oh, they're all up there. Uh, speaking of which, I'm loving the look of most of these Mystic Archive cards. Yeah, especially Faithless Looting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have that. I'm staring at it right now. I, I yeah. can't believe this is real card art. I honestly don't hate it. It just doesn't look like anything else from the set. And I know it's like a different artist, but like even still, it's so weird. Bill's so ugly; he could be a modern art masterpiece. That's yeah, true. That thanks. Hey, you're welcome, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Tesseret's Gambit. It's it's got a Phyrexia land or Phyrexia oh, yeah. mana. Uh, draw two cards, then pro proliferate. I kind of want Phyrexia mana to come back, but I kind of also really hope that it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, that's fair. Draw to proliferate. Oh, no. Being able to uh, cast cards for no mana is pretty strong. Well, you still have to play. You you still have to ca uh, pay three, but you can pay three and two life as opposed to three and a blue. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's certain cards that it's really broken with. Um, but all right. Um. I think that's it. Uh, we have to go so we can play Commander. Yes. Uh, so in response, I bolt myself. <laughs> <laughs>